We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what color is the Lenten season in your church? Do you guys know? Anyone willing to guess? If you know it, just go ahead and blurt out the answer. If you know the answer, is it white? Is it green? Is it red? No, it's purple. Purple is the color for the Lenten season as we go through our journey. And I want to welcome you guys, as I was saying, is that today for chapel, we have um, different things that we need to talk about, but one of the first things that we want to start off today in chapel is, is go ahead and we're going to do our invocation. So I want you guys to go ahead and repeat after me. So repeat this. We begin, we begin. 
in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we just called upon God to be with us as we are worshiping. I know it's kind of weird because we're doing this on video, but soon enough we'll be able to do this in person eventually. But now we call God to be with us. Now what we should do together is we should do a real basic confession and absolution. As being a pastor, one of the things that I have the ability, I've been given the office of the keys. And the office of the keys says that I can forgive and withhold forgiveness from anyone. And so with that said, let us go ahead and confess our sins. Now for you little ones listening, sins are the things that we do that God doesn't want us to do. And for your, us older kids, sin is the natural rebellion that we have in all things God-like. Okay? So, let's go ahead and begin with the basic confession. Repeat after me. Say, I, go ahead and say, I am a sinner. Many things, God, I have done have been bad. Many things that I have done cause hurt feelings, hurt my parents, hurt my brothers and sisters, and even hurt my friends here at school. There's many things that I do that I know in my heart that are really bad and wrong. But Heavenly Father, I confess these to you, and I know what I've done is wrong. And I ask for your guidance so that I may turn from these ways and grow from them. I don't want to do what is wrong in your eyes. I want to do what is right. So lead me, guide me, and encourage me all of my days. Okay, so upon hearing your confession, guys, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I thereby forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can't wait till next year because if you guys recognize who I am, I'm the guy who used to come before COVID and he used to bring a guitar and we used to scream and make lots of noise in chapel, playing songs and moving around while we do a message. And I can't wait because hopefully, cross our fingers with a lot of prayer, when it comes to this next school year, we'll be doing a lot more of that in chapel. But for right now, we'll just stick with the video. And, you know, I think we're used to this type of thing right now. But I, right now, am sitting down at my church. Now, if you look, you probably can't figure it out behind me. But I got all sorts of shiny colors behind me and different type of sun. And the reason is, is because I'm sitting near a bunch of stained glass windows. Now... Show me, raise your hands, raise your hands if any of you guys here go to church. And I know some of you guys don't go to church, and that's okay, you're still looking for a church home. But for many of you guys, you probably go to Trinity or you go to other different churches. And it's really cool about church is that churches are opening up. Churches are finally coming around and saying, hey, why don't you guys start showing up more on Sundays because it's safer to be here. And so I think what's really neat about that is when we come into church, you see all sorts of stained glass windows, you start hearing the music from the band or the music from the organ, you start smelling coffee, your parents start yelling at you a little bit, saying, hey, you gotta sit down, you gotta stand up, hurry up. And you get to go to your Sunday school classes. But the question I have for you today is when you go into church, what are some things that you don't normally see in the worship area? Now, the worship area that we have here at Trinity Lutheran School and also here at Christ Lutheran is you walk in, there's a bunch of pews, and then there's the altar area, there's a pulpit, and there's a lectern. But what are some things that we don't normally see in church? So I want you to think about that for a second. Think and think and think. And if you can think of something that you wouldn't normally see, go ahead and blurt it out. Your classrooms are in your homes. You know, some examples, we don't normally see barnyard animals in church. We don't normally see things like, oh, a motorcycle. We don't see a horse. Do we normally see other things in church like, um, hmm, a PlayStation? Do we see Monopoly? 
Do we see Play-Doh? Lots of Play-Doh in the pews. Do we see, hmm, I wonder what else I'm thinking about. Do we typically see a baking oven? Do we see people cooking in church? There are certain things that we don't see in church. And I want to read from you today. This is from Matthew chapter 21. And in Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse 12, Jesus is at the temple. So, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. As it is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and lame came to the hymn of the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw what wonderful things he did, and the children shouted in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they were upset. Okay. Now this is from Matthew, and as this Lenten time, we're going to be learning more about Jesus coming to Jerusalem, and eventually we're going to find him to go to trial, and they're going to find him guilty, and they're going to go ahead and crucify him. But here's the thing. Jesus went into the temple. So just like your church, just like our church here at Christ Lutheran or down there, uh, or even chapel, there's certain things that we don't have in church, and it's because of gospel messages like this. Could you imagine if we had in church, as you're going around during this service, someone walking by and selling hot dogs and beverages? Could you imagine someone walking by and trying to sell magazines or trying to sell tennis shoes. Could you imagine as you're walking into the worship area and you're sitting down where you're sitting in your seat and someone comes up to you and says, hey, I want you to buy this spot so your parents can buy that seat in the church so they can sit there at all times. Now, I know this seems kind of silly. It's really silly. Why in the world would people want to buy things, or more importantly, why do people want to sell things in church? Well, God makes it quite clear that the church is for prayer. The church is for hearing the word of God pronounced. You know, when a pastor goes over and preaches a sermon, hearing the music that's being played. But for other things, like selling stuff, Jesus frowns upon that. He doesn't want us to have a Starbucks in the middle of the worship area. Now, it's okay to have like a store outside of worship. It's okay if, you're, if your church, wherever you worship at, has a little coffee shop that's, you know, located somewhere in the church. But, you know, that's like you leave the church area, the worship area, and you go and you buy something. You shouldn't have to buy something inside the church. In our gospel text today, Jesus was so upset because when he walked into the worship area, the, the temple, he saw all sorts of people trying to sell different types of animals to be given up for sacrifice. And really what Jesus was upset at was that if you're really poor, you didn't have much money, and you wanted to make the biggest sacrifice possible, and that meant basically you would find an unblemished, a perfect lamb to be sacrificed, You'd have to pay a lot of money for that. And if you didn't have the money for that, they basically would say, all right, well, here's a couple birds. Go ahead and sacrifice these birds in the temple. Well, how do you think that made people feel? People started saying to themselves that, you know, I don't have much money, so I guess God doesn't really think much of me anymore. That people with more money, God favors more. And Jesus wasn't about that at all. Jesus turned around and said, let's get rid of all this junk. What church should be all about is you and God. You and God. Not you and your wallet, not you and how much money your parents have, but rather you and God and that relationship. Now, being the Lenten season, I would love to have been there at your guys' school today making a bunch of noise and everything because there's so many different ways that we can offer up Thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father other than just our monies. Because, you know, let's be honest, I know you guys are kids. I'm sure how many of you guys have carry a wallet around in the first place and how many of you kids have more than 20 bucks. But I'll tell you this, there's other ways that you guys can also give praise to our Lord other than money. You can make a joyful noise. So on the count of three, I want you guys to make the biggest noise you can. All right? One, two, three. Ah! It's okay.
Now, for you teachers, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's fine. God, our Heavenly Father, really wants to hear us. He wants to hear us through prayer. And maybe other ways that you can help is maybe in church, when you start looking around, when you start going to your church on Sundays and you're seeing, oh, wait, there's an old person who's trying to come into the church. You can say, you know what, I'm going to go help them. Or if you see someone drop some piece of papers on the ground, you say, you know what, I'm going to pick up those pieces of paper and put them in recycling. There's so many different ways that we can help, even if we don't have much money. And Jesus just smiles at us and just thinks all of it's truly a blessing. Now, raise your hand if you are beginning to ponder the big responsibility of being an acolyte. I started being an acolyte when I was in fifth grade because, well, there wasn't very many kids in our church. But I'm wondering for you guys who is going to be an acolyte. That's another way that you can help and you don't have to have much money to do so. You just got to make sure to wear your nicest clothes you possibly can and then pastor will give you a nice white um, alm to draw, dress into and then you can go up there and you can light the candles. So that's pretty neat. All right, so let's go ahead and pray together here. So repeat after me. Gracious Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our teachers. Gracious Father, we thank you for church. We know that church is for prayer. Church is for hearing your word. Prayer is for fellowship. But we also know this, Heavenly Father, that church is a time for us to be with you. Let us not be distracted by all the things of this world that could be a big distraction for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's go ahead now. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. So let's go ahead and keep our eyes closed and our, keep our hands folded as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, you guys have a wonderful day now, and I hope you guys respect your teachers. Be nice to your fellow classmates. And when you guys go to church this Sunday, remember that we go to church for prayers and to hear God's word. And all those silly distractions, those things like people trying to sell you stuff in the worship area, shouldn't be there. And that's something that our Lord and Savior Jesus commands. All right, you guys have a blessed day and take care.